Why aren't we resolving it on the African continent? Exactly. The photo opportunity comment, you know. And that's the big issue. It's, it's, it's building the confidence and capacity of the union itself. Because at the end of the day, it's the union that should drive this. Okay. It's the union yeah, that... The president, Tabombe, was the person that led that conversation on the African continent in contemporary times. There seems to be no leader on the African continent that has taken the reins of that conversation, both strategically and tactically, to develop a real conversation about um, African integration, if you care to call it Pan-Africanism. We had here the Pan-Africanist, uh, the Pan-African um, Parliament, which was an, an unmitigated disaster last year. Um, who is leading that conversation on the African continent at the moment uh, in as far as strategic and tactical, practical uh, integration of uh, Africa other than the little squabbles that are very reactionary at the moment. When uh, President Tawumbeki was leading the conversation, it was, it was proactive. It gave a vision. We don't have anybody at the moment on the whole continent that is leading that conversation. How do, so, we, how do we start that process? So that's the responsibility of the union, amongst others. But let me deal with it in two parts. I also want to place the responsibility squarely on the laps of African intellectuals, both on the continent and in the diaspora, to play a role in stimulating intellectual discourse around these issues and to do so critically and, and clearly being able to not only constructively engage with some of the challenges uh, on the continent but also to be able to provide solutions. Uh, to reflect on where things have fallen down. Secondly, you've correctly pointed out, pointed to the issue of the Pan-African Parliament and the importance of the Pan-African Parliament to hold uh, governments accountable to what ha they have committed to through the Constitutive Act of the African Union to hold governments accountable to programs. So I'm giving you a long-winded response. Coming to African leaders themselves, I mean, to, to a large extent, um, maybe there's two levels of uh, uh, challenges. Firstly, we probably need to look at the political parties on the continent, because leaders don't come out of nowhere. We haven't really, other than even during what was referred to as the Arab Springs or the West African Harmatans, you didn't just have organic leadership coming to the fore. And, and maybe a big challenge lies on the weakness in political parties, and I'd want to even say the original liberation movements, that's contributed to that. But finally, we vote for the leaders we have, and I think what we should do is also challenge the leadership to provide the direction required and uh, to engage in a manner that doesn't just provide us with visions that may be seen as ethereal, but also with concrete plans that will lead to the implementation of programs that can deal with uh, unemployment, underdevelopment on the continent, and so on. Yeah. Colleagues. Thank you very much. That uh, concludes uh, this uh, briefing. We look forward to having you join us on the 27th of May. That would be Friday next week.
where most of these issues will be unpacked and liberated upon. Thank you once again. Thank you. And it's definitely going to be exciting, just judging from your questions today. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Mm -hmm. <coughs>